Hi, this is Dr. Brent Thomas Hogarth, licensed clinical psychologist, flow state and executive coach with the Flow Research Collective and psychedelic advisor with Levity Labs. Today, I'm truly excited and honored to jump into sharing a review of one of the most groundbreaking studies in the field of psychedelic research published in 2011 by Roland Griffiths titled Mystical Experiences Occasioned by Psilocybin Lead to Increases in the Personality Domain of Openness. This study was absolutely groundbreaking. It's revolutionary and revolutionized our understanding of how to treat mental illness and also what leads to human flourishing and the role that psychedelics can play in this journey. So before we even get into any of the study, I want to just kindly ask you to take a moment with me to turn your awareness inside and do that simply by taking one deep breath with me. And I just want you to be aware of what awaits you inside as you turn your attention inward. So let's take this breath now if you're open to it. So what you might have noticed, and it's not the dog barking if you heard that, is that what awaits us within us is the state of consciousness that's always observing, always witnessing. It's the state of consciousness that truly unites us, right? It's this observing, witnessing, pure consciousness. It's a state of consciousness where we can experience some of our greatest truths and truly connect to a state of complete freedom. Right? We often look externally to find freedom, unknowing that within us there's always this capacity to connect to this state of pure awareness of consciousness and freedom. Obviously, I'm talking about here is consciousness. But what we find as we dive even deeper into the state of consciousness is we can connect to what's known as the mystical realm. Really, this is one of the most uniquely meaningful and transformational states of consciousness. So let's first define it. And I promise you this is going to connect back to this study and hopefully have some practical impact in your life. So the mystical experience, this is how we describe it. It's inevitable and it's paradoxical. Inevitable meaning it's almost impossible to try to describe it. And it's paradoxical, right? The insights, the wisdom we glean from this mystical experience seem somewhat opposite to our typical way of understanding the, the world and reality itself. Um, it has a noetic quality, so it seems as though we're connecting to this kind of ultimate reality. It feels truer than our typical state of consciousness. Uh, there's a kind of euphoric positive mood, so we feel as if we're connecting to a deep, infinite sense of love, of joy, of, of meaning and connection. Uh, there's a sense of sacredness, right? It's distinct from the rest of our ordinary states of consciousness. There's a sense of unity, both within ourselves and our past, our traumas, our whole body, right? This feel of connecting of oneness with our body, but also with others, with objects, with others, with nature itself. And finally, there's this kind of real sense of transcending of time, of space and of the self. And so it's this unique mystical experience that was found. And we're going to get into this to lead to this enduring change in personality, right? This change in openness to experience. So this brings us really to psychedelics now, to psilocybin and this groundbreaking study. So in 2011, Roland Griffiths, Roland Griffiths is a professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Neurosciences at John Hopkins School of Medicine, right? This is a, this is a serious dude here doing this study. And, and, you know, before even I get into some of these specific findings, let's just ground these findings in the context of understanding personality and understanding human behavior. So personality up until this point, and even still to this day, is somewhat considered fixed, right? So personality is really um, stable ways of thinking, of feeling, of acting or behaving, considered to be somewhat fixed after the age of 30, really. And it's something that's considered to be somewhat heritable, genetic, universal, 
right? We all have personality qualities. They're genetic. They're universal. And, and, and there, there's been no study up until this point that showed that you can change personality through one discrete event. This is an important finding, again, showing just how groundbreaking this study was. So given that the claims uh, that the psychedelic experience, you know, typically aligns with this personality quality of openness, right, which really encompasses um, appreciation for arts, for music, for culture, um, a sense of openness to experience, to emotions, to our, uh, to others, a sense of uh, kind of malleability to change our perception of our beliefs, our values, our roles and responsibilities in, in the world. Given these kind of claims that the psychedelic experience induce, Roland Griffiths and others decided, all right, Let's let's see if this is an enduring true change that happens through the psychedelic experience. So, you know, before I should go any deeper, let me just mention that, you know, this study sought to determine if psychedelic experience could increase this domain of openness, right? Deeply connected to this mystical realm of consciousness. So what we're doing here, what we're experiencing is a bridge between science and spirituality, right? We understand this mystical realm and now we're trying to operationalize it through a study to see if we can change or connect to this mystical realm. And funny enough, psychedelics is the bridge here. How, how fucking cool is that? So what is openness? Before we get a little bit more to the, the depth of the study, let's just define a little bit more openness so you can know the utility, see, maybe even understand your own openness uh, at the moment and perhaps how it can facilitate uh, your own well-being. So openness, again, is this appreciation for aesthetics, for art, for fantasy, and, to, and for imagination, awareness of your feelings and the feelings of others. It's truly this sense of kind of um, deep intellectual curiosity to learn, right? It's, it's to be open-minded and tolerant to others' viewpoints and beliefs. It's what we kind of consider with the word open, right? Someone is open. Um, but it, it also includes this quality of having kind of this being permeable to new ideas and new experiences. And people who are tend to be high in openness are motivated by novelty. They're kind of those sensation seekers, right? They want to travel, listen to new music, meet new people, are hungry to learn, right? So... A lot of great qualities that come with uh, having an open personality. And, and and so openness, obviously, you can understand, is quite correlated uh, to creativity, right? So the findings of this study, and, and maybe one more thing I should just say, is that personality is typically understood um, through one of the major models known as the five-factor model. You don't need to know this, but if you're interested in understanding a little bit more of the context here, um, uh, openness in what is one facet of this five factor model. You can remember all the facets through the acronym OCEAN. Uh, so, openness to experience. Um, uh, <laughs> C, conscientiousness, kind of work ethic, diligence. Uh, e, extroversion. Uh, A, agreeableness. And N, neuroticism, kind of your procreate proclivity to uh, aversive emotions, anxiety, frustration, anger, sadness. So those are the five main personality qualities. And we're looking specifically at this one of openness and how psychedelics in particular psilocybin can increase it. So what did they find in this study? Again, they found that through a full-blown mystical experience, this quality of openness can change in healthy ad adults to a degree that has not been seen uh, over an adult's life in a whole decade, right? So if you think of kind of meditation and contemplative practices being the path to reaching enlightenment and wholeness, what we're kind of showing here and what Roland Griffiths shared in his TED Talk is perhaps psychedelics is the, uh, the crash course, right? So the growth in the self greater than uh, in, in openness particular greater than what can be seen over typically a whole decade um, and it was the need for a complete mystical experience that really led to these changes and these changes didn't last a week they didn't last a month six months a year over a year 
right? And I, I imagine as we see more and more of these longitudinal studies that these changes are going to change. Why is that? Well, we could just understand, you know, common sense that when you have this experience, right, you're not going to be able to maybe stay connected to it, right? All those qualities of the mystical experience in your daily life, but you'll remember them, you'll hold on to them, and perhaps you'll filter your life through those lenses. And that is something that uh, can lead to an enduring change. So one last thing I'll say about this study is that the only other study that had shown a change in openness to experience was uh, not, not ironically, uh, a meditation study but it was a meditation study that took three months and required hundreds of hours of meditation. So good insight, right? We can experience some of this change in openness uh, in this personality trait through meditation, uh, but it takes a long time. So perhaps psychedelics can assist and, and then this state could be grounded more so and integrated in a daily practice through contemplative or meditation practice. So. What, who cares? What's the benefits of having increased openness of experience, um, personality quality? Let's get into some of this. So this is where I hope you take some practical insights. So people who are open to experience, they truly see the world differently. They don't have the blind spots that those people who have less openness uh, typically have. They're intellectually curious, they're creative, they're imaginative. Creativity is typically understood in this uh, modern world um, to be one of the most important characteristics to thrive as in business, obviously as a creative, but truly in business. This is what executive CEOs are looking for because we live in an exponential world where you know challenges are changing at a pace that we've never seen before. So we need creative, insightful solutions more and more. So openness is, is correlated to uh, creativity. Openness is, in cre is correlated to some facets of intelligence. Why? Well, when someone's uh, open to experience, they're always looking to learn, right? They're insatiable hunger and curiosity. So they're always picking up new ways of learning, solving problems. So particularly uh, openness is correlated to fluid intelligence. This is kind of this ability to, we can consider maybe even street smarts, ability to find novel solutions to day-to-day -day problems or complex problems, not crystallized knowledge or intelligence, which is kind of facts. Uh, interesting enough, openness to experience typically is understood to decrease through age. So you probably see that in people as they get older, their ideas, their beliefs can sometimes become more and more rigid and fixed. So perhaps an additional uh, value of psychedelics for those who are older. Uh, gender. So perhaps not uh, surprising to women, but women tend to have greater openness to experience than men do. So perhaps greater value, I should say maybe greater value, but there's a, a unique value for men in the psychedelic experience to open up uh, their personality. Uh, also, uh, when you have an increased openness to experience, we tend to be more willing to become absorbed in the moment. Absorption, kind of this complete rapture of attention to the here and now is pretty correlated to the flow state, right? When our attention is completely connected to what we're doing, the task at hand, that's when we perform and feel at our best. So openness is correlated to absorption. Uh, Openness is also correlated, uh, probably not surprisingly, to a more liberal, liberal uh, social leaning. So there's some perhaps value in increased intolerance with others. And I don't need to get into the kind of this is a political topic, but that's just an interesting finding. And a few other ones that I think are really interesting. So certainly openness is correlated to increase well-being and happiness and mental health. Interesting enough, Openness is related to many aspects also of sexuality. So men and women high in openness are more well-informed about sex, have wider sexual experiences, stronger sexual drives, and uh, more uh, liberal sexual attitudes. 
So perhaps for couples, relationships, people who have constrained uh, sexual lives, that increasing openness to experience through a psychedelic psilocybin session could be meaningful in their love lives. And uh, finally, I just want to finish this off with one quote. You know, I want to finish this off by a quote by Csikszentmihalyi, the founder of flow theory. And so he said this. He said that openness to experience may seem like a personality trait that you can't alter. But once you are aware of the benefits of allowing your mind to wander, to train it through reading or just enjoying occasional flights of fancy, you'll be better able to flex your mental muscles. So this quote was before the research in psychedelics had really emerged and come to the forefront. I imagine if Csikszentmihalyi knew about the value of psychedelics, he might add this as one of those tools, right? One of those interventions and technologies to increase uh, this mental uh, muscle of creativity, of insight, of absorption or flow. And so with that said, kind of bring this video now all full circle. I just want to remind you that what we've discovered here, what this study has shown is that through a psilocybin experience and a full-blown mystical experience, we can connect to that which is already within us, this mystical type experience, and it leads to an enduring change in our personality, an increased openness to our experience, to ourselves, to others, to the world around us. And in doing so, connects us on a spiritual realm to our shared humanity and interdependence with others. And for me, I truly believe that that can lead to an increase, not just in our well-being, but a sense of peace around the world, a sense of non-violence and a sense of feeling as if we're part of one whole family and the benefits that come from that. And that's truly why I do this work uh, as a psychologist and as executive coach and certainly as a psychedelic advisor with Levity Labs. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review of the groundbreaking Rolling Griffiths study, mystical experience occasioned by psilocybin lead to increases in personality domain of openness. I hope you found some value in this and I hope you can take it into your world. Um, to benefit yourself and certainly others. Again, my name is Dr. Brent Thomas Hogarth. Appreciate you watching this. And until next time, be well, folks.